Hello friends, so today's case is about managing congenital cataracts. Well, this is an unfortunate 7 year old girl with congenital cataract which has probably been neglected for years now and she has this nystagmus and poor fixation. Of course, she requires surgery and ultrasound immersion biometry could be done. We're aiming at about plus one diaper hyperopia. So let's begin the case. The surgery is being done under IV sedation and uh, posterior subtenance anesthesia. Uh, there are a few critical uh, factors intraoperatively while operating on congenital cataracts. Well, getting the anterior and the posterior rexus right is probably the most important thing and then placing the lens into the bag. I prefer to use this perceived OD for most of my cases for rexus, including the pediatric cataracts. After creating the main incision, I begin my rexus with the forceps. As soon as I puncture, the liquefied cortex escapes out, obscuring the visibility. The OVD is placed in the peripheral part of the anterior tear to squeeze out all the liquefied cortex. I could sense that the capsule is quite thick and won't tear very easily. Well, it's a long-standing cataract and it would have induced a significant amount of fibrotic changes. As is evident, there is no nucleus here. The entire lens mat itself is liquefied and in fact partially absorbed. A little bit of irrigation expresses it all the loose lens material. The remaining cortex which is sticking onto the posterior capsule is aspirated. Now I can see that the posterior capsule is quite thickened and probably has a overlying thin fibrotic plaque as well. Now moving on to the most critical aspect of the surgery, it is performing the posterior capsurexis. While performing the posterior capsurexis, I follow these principles. Underfill the bag with OVD so that the posterior capsule can be reached easily and then can be perforated without much stress. On the contrary, if we deepen the bag significantly, then visualization of the posterior capsule becomes difficult. A straight 26G needle is used to perforate the posterior capsule. After the posterior capsule opening is done, sodium hyaluronate is introduced through the opening into the burger space. And finally, the posterior capsule rexus is completed using a forceps through the side port. I begin by underfilling the bag with an OVD. The capsule is perforated with a 26G straight needle. And through this opening, a little amount of sodium hyaluronate is introduced into the Berger space. The torn edge is held with the forceps which is introduced through the side port. Immediately I can sense that the capsule is thickened significantly and tearing is not going to be easy. And in fact there is a thin layer of fibrotic plaque also over the posterior capsule. The tearing edge is frequently re-grasped and then a small area is torn and again re-grasped. The rexus is pretty much in control until I reach this part where there is significant amount of fibrosis. 
and it takes some effort and persistence until the uh, rexus could be completed. And eventually, if we have a clear visual axis. After reforming the bag with OVD, the intraocular lens is placed into the bag. Now, this is a single piece hydrophobic acrylic lens, which opens quite gently. The OVD in front of the lens is removed by irrigation. It takes some time to flush out all the OVD which is there and the little bit of OVD which has gone into the Burger space is left there itself. And finally I am just checking the IOL position and centration and that's it, it's time to close now. Uh, stromal hydration is done for sealing the wounds. Uh, in children, we need to understand that the tissues are a little bit elastic and hence I spent sufficient amount of time to redo stromal hydration a couple of times until I am confident enough that the wound is watertight. That's it, the case is done. This is the 3 days post-op picture, the eye is quiet with no inflammation. The family members feel that the child's vision is better, she can identify and follow hand movements uh, for about half a meter. Hopefully the vision still improves but as we all know earlier intervention could have yielded a significantly better results. Thank you for your attention and hope this helps.